Text, 3M. Science. Applied to Life. Module 3, Stages of Pressure Injuries. On the slide, a person lifts a patient's foot. In Module 3, we will review the stages of pressure injuries. As a reminder, pressure injuries are classified using an international classification system that describes the extent and depth of tissue damage of the epidermis, dermis, and surrounding structures. Often, pressure injuries can be categorized as stage one through four, but in some cases, they do not fit into one of these stages. Pictures of the four stages of pressure injuries appear, getting more severe the higher up the scale they are. Pictures of the four other categories of pressure injuries appear. Some pressure injuries may be described as unstageable, deep tissue, medical device related, and mucosal membrane pressure injuries. Let's discuss each in more detail. A cross-section illustration of tissue shows a red spot on and below the skin. A stage one pressure injury can be described as intact skin with a localized area of non-blanchable erythema. Visual changes may be preceded by a presence of blanchable erythema or changes in sensations, temperature, or firmness. Color changes do not include purple or maroon discoloration as those may indicate a deep tissue injury. Stage one pressure injuries may be difficult to recognize, especially in patients with dark pigmented skin because it can make reactive hyperemia challenging to determine. Consider other strategies, such as assessing discomfort, palpate for induration of firmness, and discoloration compared to surrounding skin, as those may also be indications of stage one pressure injuries. The cross section shows a red wound from the skin down to the dermis. Stage two pressure injuries are partial thickness loss of skin with exposed dermis. The wound bed is pink or red, moist, and may also present as an intact skin or ruptured serum-filled blister. Adipose and deeper tissues are not visible, and there is no presence of granulation tissue, slough, or eschar. Stage two pressure injuries commonly result from the adverse microclimate and shear in the skin over the pelvis or heels. The cross section shows a deep red wound with whitish spots from the skin, through the dermis and into the adipose layer. Stage three pressure injuries are defined as full thickness loss of skin. In these types of pressure injuries, adipose is visible in the ulcer. Granulation tissue and epiboly are often present. The depth of tissue damage in stage three pressure injuries can vary based on anatomical location. Areas of significant adiposity may develop deep wounds as well as undermining and tunneling. In this stage, fascia, muscle, tendon, ligament, cartilage, or bone are not exposed. The cross section shows a deeper red wound with whitish streaks that goes from the skin through the dermis and adipose layer down to the muscle tissue. Stage four pressure injuries are described as full thickness skin loss with tissue loss and exposed or palpable fascia, muscle, tendon, ligament, cartilage, or bone is present. Text, obscured full thickness skin and tissue lots. The cross section shows a wound from the skin down through the adipose layer. The upper portion of the wound is filled with black and white material. In some cases, pressure injuries do not fit into the four stages previously discussed. If the wound base is covered with slough or a scar and obscures the extent of tissue loss, it would be classified as an unstageable pressure injury. Once the non-viable tissue is removed, a stage three or stage four pressure injury may be revealed but until the wound base is visible, it should be classified as an unstageable pressure injury. Text, persistent, non-blanchable, deep red, maroon or purple discoloration. The cross section shows a dark purple splotch reaching from the skin down through each layer to the muscle tissue. Another type of injury that is not classified by stage is a deep tissue injury, which presents as intact or non-intact skin with localized areas of persistent, non-blanchable deep red, maroon and or purple discoloration or epidermal separation, revealing a dark wound bed or blood-filled blister. This injury results from intense and or prolonged pressure and shear forces at the deep bone muscle interface. Pain and temperature change often precede skin color changes. Discoloration may appear differently in darkly pigmented skin. Persistent erythema and hyperpigmentation, rather than blanching, can be used to determine pressure injuries in these patients. 
Medical devices used for diagnostic or therapeutic purposes provide essential care for patients, but can result in medical device-related pressure injuries, also known as MDRPIs, due to prolonged pressure or shearing forces. MDRPIs can occur on any location on the body, including mucosal cavities. MDRPIs are staged using the standard pressure injury staging system, previously described in this module, unless they are on a mucosal tissue. A picture on the slide shows a whitish wound underneath a metal brace. A picture below shows a red and blistering wound on the top of an ear. MDRPI pressure injuries that are non-mucosal can be caused by essential medical devices such as oxygen tubing, braces, cervical collars, and stabilizers. Here, you can see an unstageable pressure injury caused by a brace and a stage two pressure injury of the ear caused by an oxygen cannula. Text involves moist lining of body cavities and some organs. A picture on the slide labeled nose shows a dark red injury on a person's nose. Below, a picture labeled mouth shows a red injury on a person's lip. Because of their structural differences, Medical device-related pressure injuries that occur on mucosal tissues such as the tongue, nasal passages, and genitals cannot be staged using traditional staging. These injuries are defined as mucosal membrane pressure injuries. Thank you for watching Module 3, where we discuss the stages of pressure injuries. We hope you will join us for the next module. Text, thank you. 3M. Science. Applied to life. Copyright 3M 2022. All rights reserved.